Hi, this is the fifth lecture in uh, basic science in orthopedic boards. And in this lecture, we're going to speak about the stress strain curve and other mechanical characteristics. A good source that you can use in your study is this book written by myself. First thing that we're going to talk about is the load elongation curve. Sometimes the load elongation curve is referred to as force displacement or load deformation. The slope of this curve is the stiffness. So stiffness is the uh, slope of the load elongation curve or the force displacement, load or force is by Newton, elongation or displacement is by millimeter and the curve uh, the slope of this curve is the stiffness. As we're going to talk later, modulus of elasticity is the uh, slope of the stress strain. So modulus of elasticity is the stress of the uh, is the slope of the stress stress strain curve, but the stiffness is the slope of the load elongation curve. Uh, there is one uh, thing characteristics of uh, the load elongation uh, for ligaments and tendon that sometimes the loading and unloading is not over each other it's not identical uh, mode so uh, there is um, uh, energy dissipation or what's called as hysteresis so hysteresis or energy dissipation it's the loading um, uh, and unloading in the load elongation curve of ligament and tendons uh, they are not over each other uh, there is some energy dissipation meaning that some energy may be lost as heat so um, uh, briefly load elongation curve the slope of this curve is the stiffness which is different than the modulus of elasticity it's the slope of the stress strain curve uh, the loading and unloading uh, in cases of ligaments and the tendons sometimes it's not over each other and there is some energy dissipation referred to as hysteresis meaning that some energy is lost as heat there is a very important concept that I'd like to explain, which is the viscoelastic material. Viscoelastic material is the material which um, has the properties that are rate dependent uh, or time dependent for the applied force. In orthopedic, bones, tendons, or ligaments uh, are all viscoelastic material. Uh, so that's why uh, if you are doing a research, uh, for example, on different specimen of bone, uh, you have to control the rate of application of the force because this rate uh, will affect them, uh, the behavior of the bone. So viscoelastic material is uh, the material that uh, has properties that um, are rate dependent or time dependent for the applied force. Uh, in orthopedic, uh, bone, ligaments, and tendons uh, are all viscoelastic material. Uh, the viscoelastic material has uh, two important um, uh, concepts that I'm going to explain, which is creep and stress relaxation. So both creep and stress relaxation um, are properties of the viscoelastic material, which, uh, as we said, bone is a viscoelastic material. And I'm going to explain uh, the creep and the stress relaxation here. So what is creep? Creep means that um, progressive deformation will happen uh, when a constant force is applied over a period of time. So in this curve here, at this point of time, a load or a force applied resulted in deformation. And then over this time, the amount of load did not increase. It's constant, but the deformation increased with time. So this is creep. Uh, on the other hand, the stress relaxation it means that when a deformation is constant over a period of time, the resultant stress decreases uh, in the material over the time. So um, if you see here this curve, at this point of time, the deformation that was applied resulted in a stress. The deformation over time did not increase here. However, the resultant stress decreased uh, with time. Uh, so uh, this uh, two concepts, the creep and the stress relaxation, uh, follow under the viscoelastic material. And as you know, bone, uh, tendons, and ligaments are all viscoelastic material. Uh, so um, I want uh, to um, explain this uh, because this is an important concept in uh, orthopedic. Uh, as we said, bone, tendons, or ligaments are all viscoelastic, viscoelastic material, the materials uh, that have properties that are rate dependent or time dependent for the applied force. Um, uh, two concepts uh, uh, follow under the viscoelastic, the creep and the stress relaxation. Uh, creep means that when you have a load 
constant over time uh, the deformation uh, uh, increases as you can see here in the curve at this point this load applied resulted in deformation the load here did not increase it's constant but the deformation increased uh, stress relaxation on the other hand means when the deformation is constant uh, constant uh, constant in the material the amount of the stress will decrease with time as you can see here in this uh, point of time deformation was applied resulted in stress deformation over the time here did not increase but but the stress within the material decreased with time stress strain curve this is an extremely important topic it frequently comes in the exam uh, you need to understand this curve very good uh, to answer the question correct and also it is important um, uh, uh, to understand why we choose different materials for different implant the stress strain as we said the modulus of elasticity is the slope of the stress strain curve uh, there is two for, uh, range in the curve the elastic deformation and the plastic deformation as we're going to speak in detail also there is something called the yield point and the failure point and we're going to discuss all these uh, topics and all these uh, definitions in the next slide we are going to speak about some uh, definitions uh, uh, biomechanical definition and explain them again i'd like to uh, show this uh, curve uh, as we said the stress strain curve it's very important the slope of the curve is the modulus of elasticity uh, the steeper uh, the curve the higher the modulus of elasticity um, there is two range as we said the elastic deformation and the plastic deformation meaning that in this range here when uh, you, the stress is removed from the material the material should go back to its normal range and then at a point of time which is called the yield point after that uh, the change in the shape of the material with the stress when the stress is removed will not go back to its uh, uh, pre-stress shape uh, but it will have a permanent change in the shape so this uh, this stress strain curve has two range the elastic deformation and the plastic deformation um, the yield point is the point of the start of the plastic deformation meaning in this range here uh, the material will not go back to its original uh, shape it will have a permanent uh, deformation or permanent change in the shape uh, the yield point is the point which is the start of the plastic deformation and the yield strength is uh, the uh, magnitude of the load at which the material will start uh, to have a plastic deformation uh, so it is the yield strength is the magnitude of the load uh, where the material reaches the yield point and as we said the yield point is the start of the plastic deformation so again the stress strain it has a slope which is the modulus of elasticity the steeper the uh, the slope the higher the modulus of elasticity the first part is elastic deformation meaning once the stress is removed the material should go back to its uh, normal uh, pre-stress shape there is something called plastic deformation which starts at a yield point meaning in this area here even when the stress is removed uh, the material will not go back to its normal uh, shape but it will have some permanent changes in the shape yield point is the start of the plastic deformation range and the yield strength is the amount of load um, that is uh, needed to reach the yield point uh, at which the material will start having permanent change in the shape uh, at a point of time the material will break so if you keep uh, bending and bending at a point of time the material will break and this is called the ultimate uh, tensile strength so the ultimate strength is the uh, load that is needed um, to break the material which is the failure point there is something called the fatigue strength the fatigue strength is the amount of load needed to achieve failure but not by one cycle by cyclic loading uh, so um, uh, the ultimate stre tensile strength uh, is the strength that is needed to break the material from one time uh, the fatigue strength is the magnitude of the load uh, that is needed to achieve failure after cyclic loading uh, so this is the stress strain curve remember elastic deformation and plastic deformation the yield point is the point which change the material change from elastic deformation meaning that it will go back to its normal shape after removing of the stress to a plastic deformation meaning that it's going to keep some permanent change in the shape this is called the yield point the yield strength is the load that is required to reach the yield point 
the ultimate strength is the strength that is needed to break the material to reach the failure point um, uh, from one uh, 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 stress the fatigue strength is the uh, magnitude of load needed to achieve uh, failure but not through one time but through cyclic loading this picture here for the stress strain curve of multiple uh, material and it commonly comes in the exam so i want to explain it for you uh, you don't have of course to uh, uh, memorize everything in it but you just need to understand the concept so as we said the stress strain curve uh, uh, um, the slope of the stress strain curve will give you the modulus of elasticity um, and we said the higher, uh, the steeper the curve, uh, the higher the modulus uh, uh, of elasticity. Uh, and uh, the material that has the highest uh, modulus of elasticity is the ceramic. So in orthopedic, uh, the material that we use that has the highest uh, modulus of elasticity is ceramic, followed by copal to chrome, followed by stainless steel, followed by titanium, and then cortical bone, and then uh, cement and then um, the cancellous bone and then tendons and ligaments and then the cartilage is the material that has the lowest modulus of elasticity means that with the least amount of stress uh, a maximum amount of strain can be obtained so the stress strain curve gives you the modulus of elasticity the higher uh, or the steeper uh, the curve uh, the higher the modulus of elasticity in orthopedic the material that has the highest um, modulus is the uh, 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 ceramics and uh, the one that has the lowest is the cartilage uh, remember after the ceramics come the cobalt the chrome and then stainless steel and then titanium now we're going to speak about brittle and ductile uh, ductile materials are the material that has significant plastic deformation mean that there is a significant range in which they can have change in the shape before breaking uh, on the contrary, brittle material are the material that does not have significant uh, plastic deformation, means as, as soon as they go into permanent change in the shape, they will break. Ceramics is a very classic example in orthopedic for brittle materials, uh, meaning as uh, it does not have significant uh, plastic deformation range, it means that as soon as it goes into permanent change in the shape, it will break. Uh, polymers are a, a classic example of uh, ductile materials, uh, meaning that, um, that there is a significant range in which the material can change in shape without breaking. Uh, metals has also um, significant plastic deformation. It may be less than polymer, but it is more than ceramic. So ductile material is the material that has significant plastic deformation. Uh, brittle material, the materials that does not have uh, uh, significant uh, um, uh, plastic deformation, meaning as, as soon as it starts permanent change, it will break. Uh, ceramic is the very classic example for brittle material. Uh, polymer is a ductile material, meaning that it has mm, a wide range of plastic deformation. Uh, metals uh, can have uh, um, areas of plastic deformation. It's not as um, wide as the polymers, uh, but it is definitely much more than ceramic. So this is the difference between brittle and ductile. Uh, there is a very important concept that is called toughness. Uh, toughness is the amount of the energy that is absorbed uh, by the material um, before it breaks. So we have the failure point. We discussed that in the uh, curve before. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the area under the curve um, is the toughness. So it is the amount of the energy absorbed by the material before it breaks. And this is the toughness. Some material like uh, uh, ceramics, uh, have a very minimal toughness because it is um, it has a very minimal range uh, for example for the uh, for the plastic deformation uh, so you cannot um, for example make plates from ceramics because uh, it cannot absorb energy before it fails um, here uh, this curve represents uh, metals and um, uh, as we said it has a significant amount of plastic deformation um, and the area under the curve before failure is uh, much larger than the ceramic and also is much larger than the polymer. Uh, so that's why we make our plates from uh, metals because it can absorb significant amount of energy before it fails. So the toughness is very important concept. It is the amount of the energy absorbed before failure or in another word, the area under the curve till the failure point. Um, uh, the large toughness is uh, usually in metals, 
because these uh, have a significant um, uh, significant uh, amount of uh, um, the plastic deformation and also in the same time uh, they have um, a, a good uh, a modulus of elasticity uh, so the amount of the energy before the failure point is large enough uh, to withstand stresses uh, if you see ceramic like this uh, curve here, um, it has a higher modulus of elasticity than uh, metals, uh, but it has very narrow uh, range uh, before uh, breaking, so it is very brittle, so the area under the curve or the amount of energy or toughness is very low. Also polymers, uh, it has a very significant amount of plastic deformation, but the modulus of elasticity is very low, that's why the, uh, the um, uh, area under the curve is not uh, large, that's why the toughness is not enough. So this is the toughness. Um, the toughness of the metal uh, is large because it has a uh, high modulus of elasticity and also in the same time uh, has a significant plastic deformation. That's why we make our plates from um, uh, a metal material. The last concept that I'd like to explain in this lecture is the isotropic and anisotropic material. Isotropic materials are the material uh, that has the same properties in all direction, uh, like metals and ceramics. On the other hand, the anisotropic material, like bone and muscles and ligaments, these are anisotropic, meaning that the properties differ uh, depending on the direction of the load. So if you can see here this picture, um, depending on the direction of the load, you will have different stress strain curve. So the property of the material of the bone uh, here uh, differs than uh, differs uh, depending on the direction of the uh, uh, force applied. Uh, uh, this is the uh, difference between isotropic and anisotropic material. Thank you for listening to the lecture and I hope this lecture and other lectures in the channel uh, is useful to you in your final exam and you, in your clinical career.